everybody. Oh, I'm Sister Anita Miranda, beautiful MMA forever. And uh, I would like to share with you my vocation story. Um, I studied in the Holy Spirit, and you know, I, I was with the Holy Spirit sisters, and maybe they they could feel that I had a vocation. But you know, I was not really interested. I don't know in vocation or in their in their congregation. And then one day, one day, one day, uh, a station priest brought a magazine, and that magazine, uh, on the front page, was the Jane Perry Mazzarello. I didn't know anything about her, but what attracted me most in her picture is the neck without cover. That's all. I was attracted with the neck with that cover because I started with all the spirit sisters years ago and they were all covered and I used to ask them Sister, how do you eat when everything is covered? Or we have to untie the back of our our bed. Why is that so? Oh, the more, the more, I don't know if I'm going to enter there. So when I saw the picture of St. Eric Mozzarella, I said, oh, this is what I like. Uh, a habit without any cover in the neck. And so I tried to browse the magazine and I saw that this congregation is spread worldwide. And I saw Japan, I was attracted to Japan and I searched for it. But first of all, I had to ask my father about it. And you know what he said? What he said? Such as a very big round no. But of course, I had to do everything because I felt like uh, searching. And when I searched in the magazine, I saw uh, the address in Japan. So I tried to, and immediately I wrote to Japan. But this provincial there uh, told me that. And uh, she was very happy to see me and etc. But she said that very soon the sisters from Hong Kong are coming to the Philippines. And she, of course, nobody could help them. The love raised Philippines, the first time they have to go to, to the Philippines. So the provincial told me to wait, to wait for them. And so I did wait. And, wow, well, I waited for almost a year and no news. You know, suddenly the door of my house opened and I saw my brother in Castle because he, he tried with the, the SDB congregation. And I said, hey, you're from Victoria. Why are you here? I said, oh, oh, because. Uh, Father Branca told me to get you dead or alive. What? To get me dead or alive? You know, you know, after this month and almost a year, I don't want to, 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 to enter anymore. No more, no more. And my brother said, no, 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 no. But brother said, dead or alive. I said, okay, okay. And I did, I did move, and my brother looked for a luggage, and then opened my wardrobe, and then he was the one who, who, who ironed all my clothes, and etc., and it was there, and I could not help him, and my other sister said, but we're going to help you, but I said, I don't feel like, but the, my brother overheard, and said, you have to go, anyway, you are not a sister yet, just try. And my other brother bought the ticket for Victoria's Milling Company in the South. There I was at the airport of Victoria's. I saw two, three sisters, two Italians and one Portuguese. He, they, don't, they didn't recognize me, neither did I recognize them. And after that, they approached me. Oh, it's me who approached them. Are you the sister? Yes, you're waiting for Sister Rita Miranda. 
so that's me, that's me. And they wrote me to the Victoria's Meeting Company. And to make the story short, I was all alone in the comment, you know, a spy not nobody. And, you know, I almost ate all the sister after someone made a I was all alone in the, the sister and me and the team told me, hey, hey, get over that, you can't, you will have you. And I really thank the Lord and sister, sister Irina, I was able to persevere. And now I have a complete enemy. I was really convinced by sister Irina. And of course, two prayers. I really pray to completing should come to my help because I don't feel like staying. I didn't feel like staying. I wanted to go home. And later on, later on, uh, they sent me to Hong Kong for probation. And some probation there, of course, I learned a bit of Chinese and paper in Chinese. And later on, I was sent to Italy for my second fellowship. And of course, I was given a bailout in a way in Italy. And later, they were sent me to Portugal where they took some courses. And I didn't know Italian really. And I learned Italian through studies, through the studies of the text. And I was given exam. There are the courses that I could take all in Italy. And, and later on, when I came back after some years of work here in the Philippines, and I was sent to, to work in Japan with the migrants. And I asked the superior, how long should I stay there? And she told me, three years. But the three years, it was multiplied by four. So three times four, it became 12 years in Japan, working with the migrants. But you know, the migrants, but they really need the spiritual guidance. And I enjoyed the work there because I knew that I was bringing the Lord and I'm to them. And they enjoyed, I had to think of several activities to make them come to the puppet and look. We, we organized basketball and bowling and theater and choir, all of this. And of course, I worked with the Philippine Embassy. And the Philippine Embassy we worked in Vienna with, uh, with the migrants. And you know, when I left, I came back after 12 years. I said, provincial, three years, I'm score. I'm already 12 years here. And later on, you know, the Philippine Embassy was so nice to work with the Philippine Embassy. And in the end, when I left, they gave me, just began to meet the Philippine Embassy, and they gave me a lot of appreciation. And the migrant, you know how many migrants? I said goodbye to me, there were around 500 migrants. And the migrants, they, when I see the hungry, if you sister, but well, thanks for that. Really, I said, what for? What for? So when we work with the Lord, we are not really aware that we are doing good. Provided we have the Lord with us and our blessed Father and everything that we there.